Hey lovely ladies, how are we doing? I'm just going to put my other light on because I am a little bit, it's a bit dark isn't it today? How are we all doing? Um, I have got a little bit more of my voice back now, but this bug has been an absolute rotter hasn't it? I know that there's so many people that have come down with the same thing, it's just like loads of it around at the moment so but I at least I'm not the um, 0898 Husky Sue voice <laughs> now I think it's a little bit better than that um, so welcome welcome to my live today hope you have all had a great week so far and you are all doing well if you are here live do pop a hey in the comments say hello and um, let me know you're here where you're coming from hey Georgina lovely to see you let me know where you're calling, you know, you're coming in from today, um, in the world, what the weather's like, because so we've got some sunshine here, but it's incredibly cold, I've just put the heater on, um, and if you're catching up on replay, which I know a few of you catch up on replay, do pop a hashtag replay um, on there, and I can go back to it later on. So today's session um, is all about your own words, sounds a bit weird, doesn't it? It's, you, you know, your own words, but your own words have huge amounts of power. So we're going to talk today about how you can use your language that you use. Hey, hey, Teresa, how are you doing? Looking forward to speaking to you later. Um, so today's session is all about how you can kind of use your language with yourself to win yourself over, but also how you can use your language to woo anybody else that you know you come across so you know uh, your audience or your family anybody with a few little tweaks to your language because I don't think everybody realizes the power you've got in your words and your language so like I said it's the you know either the words you use with yourself or the use the words that you use um, you know to talk about things that are going on in your life those words have got the power to either make you or break you. They can get us good things, you know, the results that we want, but it can also get us the stuff that we don't want as well. So, you know, again, in my sort of my NLP world, obviously NLP stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming. So it's the N, the L bit there, the linguistic bit. It's all about specialising in language. And, you know, once you can actually understand how, you know, our thoughts come through and then the, the words that we speak can affect the results that we get, it's then so powerful, so, so powerful. And actually a lot of people can get into a habit of really using the same negative words over and over again, like, like habit, you know, I can't do that, um, no, I don't want to do that. Oh, isn't that awful? And then, so just, you know, you get into a habit of using the same negative words over and over. And we're all, you know, often, and you let me know in the comments as well with this one, we can often talk about more so the things that are not going right for us. You know, so, um, in fact, I've, I've, just, I've just read something and it's all the things that are not going right rather than almost celebrating the things and focusing on the things that do go right. And it's kind of, it's something that's inbuilt into us. We've got a negative bias thing built into us. So we're always going to focus on the things that haven't worked out, haven't gone right for us, rather than kind of the um, celebrating what has gone right. And our language reflects that. So we can often end up sort of moaning and complaining. You know, if we've gone to a restaurant and, you know, one part of the meal, for instance, has not gone to plan or maybe they bought the wrong bit of the order out or something like that and everything else was perfect. The restaurant was perfect. You know, you know, the food was great, but they just, you know, just happened to bring one bit of the food out wrong. What do we end up focusing on? What do we end up then talking about and moaning about um, is the things that have not gone right. And the problem we've got with this is the more that we hear, read or speak, you know, certain words and certain phrases, the more power they've got over us. 
Does that resonate with anybody? Does that make sense? Does, does anybody notice themselves actually using a negative word more often than, than not? Let me know what your main words are that you kind of know that you've got into a bit of a habit of, of talking about. A typical one is around money and money mindset. So we might say, oh, I can't, I can't, um, I can't afford that. Um, so, you know, so have a think about those types of things. You know, what are the words and phrases that you are using and do they get you the results that you want? So if you're constantly going around saying, I can't afford that, does it actually help you by saying that? So just think about it because, you know, we, um, it is the, the power we're then giving to those sentences. So let me know what those words are for you and whether they get you what you want or what, what you don't want. Um, because we can actually make a choice, we can make a deliberate choice about the, you, the words that we use to get us a different outcome. You know, so if we're feeling really down, for instance, you know, we can either feel really sorry for ourselves, and or we can or we can reframe it and, you know, raise our spirits instantly by, by what the language we use with ourselves and, and talk about it. So how many times a day do you kind of use throwaway comments as well? Throwaway words like, oh, God, doesn't my hair look a mess? Oh, I'm so stupid. My business is rubbish. Um, so, yeah, you know, have a think about there. You know, what throwaway words that you you um, that you might use at the moment to maybe describe yourself or to describe your situation. Uh, Teresa uh, can't do etc. This wouldn't work anyway. Yeah, so you're actually almost setting that up before. You've even given it a chance to do it. You've made your mind up and the words that you come out. And it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, by the way, with that. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So what other throwaway things do you say about yourself or your... Um, like Teresa just said that, oh, that's not going to work anyway. Now, what we don't realise is that these words, they really bring our own energy and our own vibration down, which also affects us on a physical level as well and you only need to know that by if you are spending a few minutes with someone who moans frequently to know just how your energy can be completely sapped um, when you're in that let me know if you've been with somebody that literally just you come away going oh my goodness me you know I'm gonna go and jump off a bus or something now that you know their energy saps your you as well with how they are let me know if you experience that as well pop that in the comments and let me know um, there was actually and, and in fact just what well, I'm gonna tell you about a little experiment actually but I just want a bit of a top tip of you if you do know that there are certain people that really bring you down, Teresa, oh yes, then you need to limit your time spent with those people, by the way, because we've got to live with joy. We want to be with people that bring us up, not bring us down. Um, so there was actually a famous experiment that I wanted to talk about today. And it was a scientist that tested the power of words. And what he actually did was he put two uh, little jam jars and he placed two cups of cooked white rice in two of the separate jam jars. He popped the lids on them and he labelled one jar with thank you and lots of other nice um, words on there. And on the other ones were really sort of derogatory terms like you fool, you're stupid and those types of things. And those jars were left in a school classroom and the students were asked to speak the words on the labels to the corresponding jars twice a day so they all had to go and say you know you're stupid you're a fool and thank you and I love you and you are amazing and those types of things so they, they did that and they did this experiment for 30 days now what do you think I'll, I'll open that up and I'll wait a second what do you think happened to each of the, the, the jars 
just as a guess, as a wild guess, what do you think happened to those jars? What I might do is actually tell you at the end. <laughs> That's what I might do. So, um, yeah, I might do that. Have a, all have a guess for the minute and those catching up on replay, pop those in when you come back to it as well on the, re the replay. Um, and then I will tell you the outcome of the experiment at the end. So some of us are in the habit of using the same negative words over and over again out of that habit. Now, the problem with all of this is the brain uses repetition to learn. So it search for patterns um, and it looks for sort of ways to make sense of the world around us. So the more and more you expose, you know, you're exposed to those same negative words, whether they're true or not, whether they're true or not, the more and more our brains start believing them. And that's how your limiting beliefs are formed, because you've said something over and over and over to yourself. And when you say something enough times, your words not only become the truth in your own mind, but also in the minds of everybody else too. So do you really want to be telling yourself and everyone that you know that no, you may be, you're unlucky in love or you're unsuccessful um, or you can't make money or you're bored or whatever else it is that you're complaining about? Because those are the words that are creating the life that you live. So do you really want that? Uh, let me let me know. Um, now I'm actually going to be doing a NLP masterclass on Tuesday. It's a free masterclass. It's about ninety minutes. Um, because for me NLP changed my life. So neuro linguistic programming. It absolutely changed my life. And I used to suffer. <clears throat> I'm going a bit off tangent here, but I used to suffer really a lot with migraines, imposter syndrome. Those, you know, those types of, uh, of things as well. And, you know, de definitely used to get very stressed <clears throat> and they would come out in migraines as well. And NLP, I haven't had a migraine in over eight years. And I really credit it with learning NLP, working on my own mindset, doing a lot of other things as well, but also timeline therapy. And I will actually be doing a timeline therapy demonstration in the masterclass on Tuesday. But you just um, you need to register for it and let me know if you want to be a volunteer as well with that. Um, so I will talk about um, this sort of stuff as well, about the language in the session on Tuesday, because our brains do not process negatives. That sounds a bit bizarre, doesn't it? But I'm going to do an experiment for you here. Now, don't think of a pink elephant. Don't think of a pink elephant. So don't think of a pink elephant. So let me know what you are now thinking about. What is the first thing that's popped into your head now I've said that? Let me know in the comments. There's not a lot of you here live today, actually. Is there something... I oh, normally get uh, you get in a pink elephant. Absolutely, yes. We normally have a few more live. Actually, I think everybody feels like they're winding down already for Christmas. To be honest, and so busy. Um, yes. So the minute I said, "Don't think of a pink elephant," you've got to think about the very thing that I said, "Don't think about," in order th to think about it. <laughs> Sounds stupid, doesn't it? But you've got to think about it to not think about it. So if you've ever heard a mom shout after her children, you know, don't run, don't cross the road, don't touch those sweets. And then they go and do exactly that, don't they? Look at what happens when you see the, you know, the wet paint sign, don't touch. What do you want? What do you feel drawn to do <laughs> when that comes up? You know, so it's, uh, you know, our brains don't process the word don't. So, you know, when we say don't forget to go and buy the milk, of course you forget to buy the milk, don't you? You're, because you're effectively telling them that's what to do. 
So we need to actually consciously use our words. And I will tell you how we're going to do that on Tuesday in the masterclass. How we can actually um, use the words that we to, to get us what we want, to get us the outcome that we want, rather than the outcome that we don't want. Now, any negative words, any powerless words, really should be avoided, avoided anyway. So things like can't, don't, won't, um, need is another one. You might not think it, but need is another one. And try, try is a big one. Try is, you know, some say it basically suggests that you're not sure of your abilities. So, and it makes people feel nervous. So if you say, oh, I'll, I'll, try, I'll try and do that for you, it makes people feel nervous. They're not convinced that you can do it if you say the word try. So things like try are also words that we want to actually ban out of our dictionary that we're going to be using. So next time that you catch yourself using some negative words with yourself, or speaking about it, or getting into that whole gossipy stuff and complaining, then really try and sort of step yourself back and think, you know, what words could I say better? You know, so, um, you know, have a, have a think about the words that are going to actually raise your vibe rather than lower it. Um, you know, and really, really boost the power of, you know, the, the energy of your words. So um, instead of saying, oh, you know, if I say, how are you? Oh, I'm not too bad. That's typical, isn't it? Not too bad. Then I want you to say, yeah, I'm feeling, I'm great. I'm absolutely great. If you've been out to an event, you know, I want you to really ramp up the energy about that. Oh, I'm terrific. I'm fantastic. Let's be quite American about it. Oh, I'm awesome. You know, so that you get a much better energetic feel in your body. So your words really do create your world. So use them wisely. Use them to get you your, you know, your advantage to your advantage. So I hope you found that um, useful, a little snippet today. Um, and like I said, I would really love to personally invite you to my masterclass on Tuesday, where you're going to learn the basics and foundations of NLP and experience the benefits of NLP for yourself so that you can use them. It's a very practical masterclass, by the way. So you will come out with some really practical um, learnings that you can change your life, you know. Um, it's If you're a coach already, NLP is a great addition. And if you're not a coach, but you'd like to be one, this is a great starting point and helps you to stand out from the crowd, actually. Um, because, you know, this is a really lifelong skill as well. But learning NLP is a really lifelong skill to do that. So it's Tuesday at two o'clock is the masterclass. Um, please sign up for it because it won't it won't be in a pop up group. I'm doing it on Zoom, so that it's really interactive. Um, so you will need to get the sign up link to do that. Um, and if you can't make it live, that's fine. But you still have got to sign up because then for 24 hours I will be making the repl the replay available for you. So um, please do go and sign up to that. It's, it's going to be a great afternoon. I've run these quite a few times now and they're absolutely great. People get a lot out of them um, by doing that. So um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed that today. So have we guessed then what happened to the rice jar experiment? Let me know in the comments and then we'll finish off with that today. So they ran the experiment for 30 days. Now the rice that was in the jar that was literally constantly insulted had actually shriveled up into a black mass. The rice in the jar that was thanked and praised and nice stuff that was said to it was still white and fluffy. So it hadn't degraded at all. And that was an experiment that they um, they used with the rice uh, jars. Now, isn't that absolutely mind boggling that your words actually can affect the component of rice? 
And if it can happen with rice, just think about what it does to other people and to yourself by doing that. So hope you found that really useful today. Please do let me know what your ha were, any comments that you've got. And I look forward to see, oh, you're really welcome, um, Teresa. So um, look forward to seeing you on the masterclass on Tuesday, guys. Speak to you later. Bye.